Tom Bugs of Bug Brand. Uh, we spoke over email a little bit, but we've never actually met. Yeah. Um, it's great to have a chance to come in and actually meet you and speak to you properly and check some products out and, and do it on camera so yeah. people can join the conversation. Well, it's nice to, it's nice <laughs> to actually meet because a lot of stuff is done over the internet, really. A yeah. lot of my stuff goes just by, yeah, loads of people uh, yeah. still never met, which is, uh, yeah. Yeah, and nice it, it feels like a rare opportunity to actually do it yeah. as well. Um, I don't think there's much, at least I'm not too aware of your background, I'd like to start with how Bug Brand came to be. You said just before I started filming, this is the 14th year Yeah. the company. Going properly was how you yeah. phrased it, yeah. like 14 years of kind of going at it properly. So how did it start, or why did it start? What was the catalyst for... Well, I came to Bristol to study up at UWE, which is the sort of uh, old poly up at um, French A. Yeah. I did what's called music systems engineering, which was very... Uh, it was sort of like music, but in the engineering department, and it was right. it was overly mathematical, yeah, in my view, okay. dry. And um, yeah, yeah. so, while I was there, I started both looking on the internet and in the sort of finding old books in their library, um, looking at sort of circuit examples, like fun sort of stuff, trying to rather than like. Um, using equations to solve filters yeah, and stuff like yeah. that and I was doing circuit bending and going to flea markets and getting things and just basically playing learning by doing has always been my sort of thing yeah um, so yeah did that and when I finished the course uh, it was like well what am I gonna what am I gonna do actually by that point I was already making some sort of small little boxes experimenting like that um, and I think I did my first batch of weevils basically as soon as I'd finished my last exams. Yeah. I'd, I was finishing these up. So, yeah. like, basically, they're yeah, getting on with it myself. Um, I've always been, uh, I mean, I've, I've played sort of music from an early age. My dad was a music teacher. Um, so, I played the piano, drums, trombone all that sort okay. of stuff but basically and then sort of picked up guitar myself um, just like oh, I want to interested in yeah. things basically yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah came out of university and it was like well I don't really want to uh, just sort of get a job that isn't suitable didn't yeah. really see anything ideal so went on the dole back then it was just on the cusp of being able to do that sort of right. thing um and after a year or so, after a bit, they put me onto New Deal for self employment, which basically, I mean, actually, no, at that stage, I was also sort of investigating rather than like applying for unsuitable jobs, which yeah. they wanted you, uh, like, you've got yeah, to apply for jobs. Yeah. Uh, but instead, I was sort of like turning it around and being like, well, I haven't got, I haven't applied for jobs, but I've been to this small business place and started sort okay. of being like, yeah, because look, I'm doing this sort of stuff myself. How, is it? Is it feasible for me to um, basically do my work for myself? Yeah. Uh, so they put me on New Deal for self-employment, and maybe a year or so went by, sort of having more training and advice. And basically, the, the advisor sort of pretty much was like, "Yeah, you kind of know what you're doing. Yeah. Get keep on keep going through the motions, keep at it. Yeah. Kind of thing. Um, but keep on checking in, and yeah." So back then I wasn't so sure whether I was going to be a sound artist or um, or a sort of musician. I was playing in lots of bands. I yeah. was helping uh, during this time. I was also helping out a lot of the Cube which, Cube Cinema, which is just down the road, which is a yeah. completely volunteer uh, run space, and that was an amazing place for sort of uh, seeing how people do things. Like how do people get by doing the thing that that passionate about yeah um people who come I, I basically i was doing sound there and i learned so much doing that and met so many people that was my sort of i mean in business terms networking yeah you could put on a suit and tie and whatever yeah but like for me it was like i'm meeting musicians that way i can track the early weevils from doing sound at the cube um meeting people there and then that having links off to sweden where like there's yeah. always been a lot yeah. of sort of um interest in my sort of stuff and lots of sort of ties um that's interesting that, that you find a, a market in sweden 
I find it strange how that works with certain bands or producers that they have an area of the world they're not in that is the most kind of supportive place for their work. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there's always... Because you could, I don't think you could calculate it. I don't think anyone could go, I'm going to, like France is going to be my big market. How does it even kind of happen? It just doesn't... Well, it's always, it, I mean, everything for me has been sort of word of mouth, really, and sort of involved, like me being involved in early forums or whatever. Um, there's been no sort of, like, I really want to push into this market or whatever. It's just yeah. like um, meeting people and then the, hopefully sort of chats happening and yeah. people getting interested and then once something's there, somebody's like, oh, where did you get that? I want one of those as well. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's all, it's all organic or whatever. It's just like, just happens sort of naturally and sort of working it out as you go along. So I guess, yeah, so I... Um, I mean, I didn't really have a clue about circuits and probably still have lots of <laughs> holes in my knowledge still still now today, but just sort of through doing, gradually sort of understanding how the sort of circuits can fit together. I um, think there's knowing circuits and there's having an ear for it. And there's obviously it, a nice place in between, but having an ear for it, for building a musical instrument. Well, this is the thing. I mean, it's, it's always been for me the sort of meeting both of the sort of scientific side and the artistic because I don't know. It can be. It can become too dry and yeah. engineering. Like I've made a technically wonderful sort of thing, but like if it doesn't feel right and if it doesn't sound right, then I don't know. Yeah. It isn't going to be something. And if it's too fucking it. complex, yeah, to, to be like, oh, what? How do I make? How do, yeah. how do I actually use this? So um, all my sort of stuff has always come from what do I want to play? Actually, the, the weevils um, and that sort of quite chaotic sort of circuit bend stuff, I have gradually sort of sidelined that because it hasn't really worked for me. Mm. Um, when I sort of started discovering the sort of modular synth approach, that started being like, well, okay, this is, for one, it was like, I didn't understand a lot of the sort of ways, but gradually working out and building and stuff, I was like, oh, okay. And that really, that then became uh, a sort of hardware exploration of stuff that I'd done in software and uh, like um, early computer audio, uh, VAS modular and stuff like that, like how you patch things together. And then actually I got into the Nord... Uh, modular yeah. stuff and that was just like oh this is really interesting but still the interface was like I don't know yeah um, it's not quite the same tactile experience yeah so once I started building the modulars um, or experimenting with that sort of stuff and just being like the sort of happy accidents that would start coming out and it's like this is yeah really there's a lot of it's a lot of interest so what were that. those those first designs with a modular, was it? Did you go into that with I want to build an oscillator or I want a full voice or were they just how can I port some of my ideas in? Or? Well, the good thing with modular is that it's building blocks. So yes, I was able to do os explore oscillators. Actually, back then I was kind of involved in prototype, looking sort of learning from people like Thomas Henry, who's done okay. a lot of sort of. Um, synth schematics and I was sort of beta testing those sort of things and sort of um, yeah again learning by doing and like yeah. oh, he's got a lot of experience um, I'm going to see how I can build it um, and then yeah and things like Ken Stone's CGS yeah. stuff um, looking at the sort of dividers and stuff like that as these examples of how I've of how he's done it. Yeah. Okay, so looking at the schematics. Oh right. Okay. Well, and then sort of getting an understanding of how it can be done, and then making my own sort of uh, yeah. How the circuit or those chips work or whatever those components are, and and then it, that's that marriage then of the artistic side and the ear for it and the knowledge you kind of bash the two together. Yeah, I mean, in, in similar to like cooking, you don't 
slavishly follow, I don't know, some people slavishly follow, this is the recipe and this is the only way it's done. But really it's like you could you can start looking at things and being like, look, it's all little building blocks. And yeah. okay, he's done it this way. This person's done it this other other sort of way. Well, what do, okay, well, I don't need that. But this thing, I mean, it's really easy to add too much. Really. Yeah, oh, of and course. And that's the sort of, ideas are easy, but actually, yeah, it's got to sort of slow bubble through the head. Yeah, really, and I think you've got out. to work through sticking with the kind of food analogy. You can't just look at the end dish and go, right, I'm going to go and make that. You have to have done something or understand the layers or flavour profiles or circuit designs or whatever analogies you're making. You have, think you have to have made some to then really start making it your own, unless you just fall really lucky potentially. Then. I mean, bits of it, it's, yeah, there's no... It's all, I mean, it, everything continues to be a sort of exploration and learning. Um, and yeah, I've still got loads of sort of curiosity on, on it. Interestingly, because um, I started putting the modular stuff out in 2009, and I did it until 2013 when my son came along. Mm-hmm. And that basically, there was a big, it was just like massive life changes. And I was like, yeah. I can't do this um, fairly nebulous modular stuff anymore yeah so i'm gonna have to change things up and that's when i started doing the red boxes and things like that standalone more self-contained but now another five years down the line i've been able to come back to the modular and having sort of being able to step away think about it consider the sort of things how it was done before how can i how do i want to do it again uh yeah, how do I want to do it differently? Yeah. And this is all sort of investigating the sort of underlying things. I'm not going to go back to the food analogy. But, no, no. But, uh, <coughs> yeah, continued interest in the sort of building blocks and ways of doing it, the, the techniques of the... Because it's, it's not just the circuit design, it's also how you... what parts you use, how it all goes together. I've sort of streamlined a lot the 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 sort of parts that I use so um, it's kind of kind of makes in theory to make it more uh, more efficient production wise yeah. I'm not efficient production wise <laughs> I don't no know, but having but, the standard building blocks that will handle I don't know CV in and out of a VCA or whatever yeah and, but having and, your building blocks but, but also the sort of parts that are used so um, yeah. because I've because everything's kind of God, okay, I've I've worked out my sort of way of physically producing something. So I know I just use these switches, I just use these pots, and I just use these yeah. sort of bananas. Um, and actually, a lot of them to start using them, you have to start ordering uh, like minimum orders. Of like they're they're not typically off the shelf stuff. So actually, even the frames of uh, the cases that I've designed to my own specification so gradually building up into my own sort of ecosystem which I don't know in some ways paints me into a corner away from the euro rack the sort of popular sort of stuff but I have gradually been able to build up enough to make it yeah nicely sort of sustainable which is which is good yeah so. it's interesting we, we spoke before again of, only over email but about you get a lot when are you going to get into euro rack I like that it isn't, and I say this as, as someone known for a channel that ninety nine percent of is, is Yoro rack. I, I, I love Yoro rack, but I, I don't think everything needs to fall into that standard. Yeah. You know, it's just down the road talking to Finley, and whichever video comes first, there'll be a video from me in Bristol with Finley at Future Sound System. I like that they're doing things outside of the format as yeah. well. I saw the new, and I like that they feed each today. other. Yeah, yeah, and I like I like that people just go, "Here's my." Thing. And of course you can interface them, all these things talk to each other. I don't feel like we need to get too stuck in everything has to be in this Yaro rack and, frame. And, and, and for me, it also plays into the sort of business way of doing things. You don't, I don't know, you don't have to go, business or what, all sort of mental approaches, you don't have to go along with everybody's doing that. It's not everybody's doing that. Mm. There are alternatives. Um, just as... I mean, I'm not going to sound like completely food obsessed, but like in producers of whatever sort of food products, you don't have to go through the supermarkets. There are alternative ways. Yeah, should they, they wish, yeah. Okay, these are the big markets, but yeah, you can get by in other ways as well. 
and yeah. uh, I like the alternatives, I think. Yeah, I think so. So as you've moved back into <coughs> modular from the red box format, the compressor and the PEQs and PT delays and things, do you see them both expanding as the com company continues, or are you kind of in their modular headspace for now, or...? It's been, I mean, it's yeah, it's been a continued sort of um, working out as I go along, basically. Um, the red sort of stuff was um, really good, and actually there's a few things that have, that I kind of want to update. Again, the PEQ, for example, that, I mean, that's been on, on the sort of back burner, trying to be updated for a good few years. Um, yeah. And... Basically, so like a couple of years ago, I did I brought out the synth voice, which yeah. was a sort of pre-configured modular because I was like, oh, I'm not, I'm still not sure whether I'm going to be able to get back into like the full modular because it brings in so many sort of um, extra. Uh, it is a bit more sort of involved, really, because mm -hmm. people then need cases and stuff like yeah. that, and it becomes yeah. quite a sort of expansive sort of thing. And I guess that when it's not your own is even infinitely more difficult because it isn't a little Yoro module that like every other Yoro module they plug in. It's not as wide of a format for, the, you know, they can't just go get a case from anywhere. Yeah, exactly. It, that's it, what, it, I mean, that's why I've sort of developed my own format. sort of thing. So I have to, yeah, sort of cover everything. Yeah. Um, which is quite good. I mean, it means that people sort of, once they, once they get sort of into my stuff, then that means there's a good sort of progression. Um, but and you're in for the whole experience then, as well. Mm. So, so I did the synth voice. Sorry, there's one over there. You, we've grabbed one. We were pointing over there for the synth voice. Yeah, yeah. Have one. I can overlay images on screen as well yeah. and, and things. But I mean, so it's it's modular. But as I said, I, I, a few years ago, I was keen to keep things more sort of pre-configured and standalone, partly for because. I, I seem to. I feel as though I've got a lot less time these days than I did six yeah. years ago. Um, but so when I released the synth voice, I was like, I'm going to have a, a an expander frame okay. alongside it, and then clocking and clock division and sequencing stuff has always been really important for me. So again, I want to. I want um, various complementary sort of pre-configured. Frames. Yeah. But as I've gone through trying to work these out, um, it's just become much more apparent that I need to sort of just go back to being truly modular. Yeah, really. but, the building but, blocks. Basically. But that, I, I like the idea that there's a the synth voice, there's the experience and the sound, and you can interface in various ways. But then expanding becomes the, the personal thing for people, like if they want to add VCAs or shift registers, or they build their own interface. I mean the way nice. the way that it feels as though it's going now, and this might be different in six months again, <laughs> yeah. is that I'm working towards several sort of on several areas, so sort of expansion things like sample and hold, ring mod to go alongside this. Very much the clocking stuff I've been working a lot. But I made basically a whole clock box sort of okay. prototype last year. Um but when I came to actually so I did the designs and made sort of I can make full prototypes like this. Mm. When I came to play it, there were various bits that I was like, just doesn't feel right. Yeah. And so I have to then be like, okay, I'm, I've got to revise my sort of thoughts on this. And yeah. it's I mean I learn I, by building it, I learn a lot. It's a bit yeah. sort of frustrating, You're like, oh, okay, yeah, back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah, again. an investment in something that's not quite ready. Yeah, but yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's important to do that, and so I've been through a few more iterative stages, and now have a few sort of building blocks, which kind of are working towards the clock box. Um, so I'd imagine that there'll be sort of like uh, once give it a, f a little bit longer, I will have sort of ideas of this would be a good sort of starting point for clocking sort of stuff but equally it might just be keep it all modular everybody can make it up yes yeah. as, as as they want but and will the some of the red things like the delay or 
I guess the compressor would be a slightly odd one in a synth cell, but like the delay, for example, will we see modular versions of these at any point? Or? I should have made the prototype already, but okay. well, I have. <laughs> there's one. It's, o there's it's, one over there. Um, I mean, it's it's. I see the reds <coughs> as being quite different from the blues, but for one, they can the reds can slot into into the sort of modular systems. Um, but the reds tend to have a more studio yeah. rap, wrapping around them, so they'll have the sort of preamp, so you've got line in and line out, which will work better for um, integration in a, in a studio setting. Um, well, that's very much what I found with a PT delay, being that having the preamp is fine with modular straight in. If I just want modular set up and I want to play, it's fine stuck in the patch bay, it sits on the desk, it just takes kind of whatever you send. Yeah, so to, ver versus to make sense, yeah. studio kind of tool. I mean, my 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 general usage, and I've been working on this. I haven't played many shows uh, the last five years or so. I'm keen to sort of get back into that, but the way I've been doing it is to have a sort of rack of modular, then some sort of mixing desk with several auxiliary sends, and basically feed several channels of modular and. DRM2 and stuff like that, yeah. and then have a couple of auxiliary sends going maybe to the PT delay and the crossover filter, and then have the whole sort of mix go through the stereo compressor. So I've been trying to basically focus on playing with my own sort of setups. Um, so yeah, the Reds have very much sort of tried to focus on the, for me, the feeling is like, put stuff through a, a, a mixing desk. I love, I, I really like sort of, the mixing sort of aspect. Yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, just, yeah. And so I really love auxiliary, one of my favorite things is the PT delay. And I guess you could look at the PEQ or the crossover filter, but I, I really like taking, funnily enough, the a Z14 and Element Heave desk, a little bit like that one, where it's on ascend, but the delay comes back into a channel. So then you can EQ and refeed back yeah. loop it through itself. And you, you play around with the pan of where the actual sound comes, but it's, and it's, it just works really. I have a big thing about not using returns, using sends. I, I, I don't channels. think I've ever used no, returns. No, comes back into a channel. Which is why a couple of days ago I was looking at like 32 channel old Alan and yeah. I did have a sort of, what was it, 24 <laughs> channel or something like that, and thought, oh, I'll upgrade to a Midas. I haven't quite sort of I don't I haven't been practicing enough in the in the studio just life has sort of got in the way yeah um, but yeah the idea of just re like pushing preamps again as feedback comes round and the EQ and that it becomes an instrument I feel yeah yeah absolutely. and just like you're saying kind of synth mixer effects the whole thing unifies when it isn't just I'll oh, turn up a bit of delay and forget about it it becomes this unified yeah so and the then the whole thing is the instrument see the whole the, the, the endless sort of journey of trying to work out the sort of i mean because i've primarily been a sort of solo musician how am i changing the the sort of studio environment with a view to it being kind of live and bef yeah sort of 6 years ago i um, had things sort of set up but was constantly bringing in extra bits of outboard and finding that I was actually, yeah. rather than playing, uh, constantly sort of rewiring. You become like studio manager, don't you? Yeah, because, I, because, because and... I'm interested, I am interested in that yeah. sort of stuff, but you have to kick yourself up the bum every so often and be like, oh, you're not actually playing at all. Um, so by focusing on kind of just using my own sort of stuff, mainly as the sound sources, um, I have been able to, I mean, I've got a sort of five frame set up at home just into a um, Soundcraft desk with two auxiliaries and going through the stereo compress and can basically, that's a that's a nice sort of play park sort of setup that I could do on headphones at yeah. night and it's just constantly sort of churning out. I mean, that's a, there's shit loads to investigate in that. that's enough to, yeah. to keep going yeah, yeah, yeah. and then sl and then slowly bringing in different different modules and stuff like that as I carry on developing that um, so an interesting way to to develop something say with um, one of the more recent modules was the dual shift register one of the more yeah, recent yeah DDSR ones. yeah how that fits in the studio case and does it actually I guess you being, being the musician and artist yourself 
it, we must massively inform that process because surely if it goes in the case and it doesn't really give you anything musically I imagine you will go oh, well technically it's good it's a good circuit so that I'll put it out it must be a case of this isn't quite right yet or it is well I had a quad, I had the quad divider um, which was another one of the clock box things and I yeah it just didn't sort of it didn't click so I've <coughs> changed it up and went for the went for a smaller one one frame uh, sorry one frac um, dual divider yeah the DDSR has been a real sort of surprise of just like my god there's so much sort of interesting stuff within it um the f the setup that i've got for Brist uh, machine of british astronica t tomorrow and for this live show i've got next week three frame sort of thing and i put some pictures online and one of my guys in norway was like what you haven't got any joysticks which is something i've brought out recently i mean i've tried sort of like using it it just doesn't live it just somehow it doesn't tend to yeah that's the interface it's like some people yeah. like ribbons some people like a midi keyboard sometimes like you know sequence of the tall knob per step it just yeah some things gel and some things don't yeah as well i'm still glad i've sort of made more of the of the joysticks but yeah don't know it, they're, they're great tools i really like them in my own setups the joysticks but i I have, I've not played much live with Modular at all. I did one performance last year with Modular and that was it. Maybe do one this summer as well. Yeah. I'm on a one a year thing at the minute. But the, the joystick didn't make it in for me either. But it does get a lot of use when I'm patching at home. Yeah. I mean, there's different, There's such different ways of playing stuff. I, I um, in, everything, kind of in everything I do, I'm kind of like sort of fast ideas and sort of a bit jittery so I start with nothing patched in and vague idea and then just basically roll with it until I've used up all the patch cables yes. um, and just constant I mean for for the live sort of thing for me as a solo musician it's always been how can I get uh events that sort of surprise me and that I have to react to. If it's a very, uh, the sort of linear approaches of like you can expect that this is going to happen and you're just sort of trying to repeat yeah. what's, what, what's sort of pre-configured. But it's like with the modular stuff, there's, I mean, there's, there's billions of, of sort of possibilities within that and little sort of tweaks. And yeah, it's 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 all improvised and it's, it's pretty it's a bit nerve-wracking at times because you like in the heat of the moment you turn that and it's like oh crap that was the wrong one to be turning yeah. but then it shifts it down into something else and you're like my god where did that come from the PT delay you like turn it down and like, oh yeah that feels right and then yeah so it's I think audiences it starts to create this feeling of watching live music that you get clear as day when there's a band on stage you can see they're interacting yeah they're listening to each other it's the whole like you know DJing with a laptop it looks like you're just doing your emails I think well you can sense when someone's reacting to what's going on like, almost like a not nervous like bag of nerves it was almost like a nervous energy in the room I think the modular it gives you it gives the audience a chance to see and feel and experience an energy with the live music I think in a way that you know just watching someone on a laptop is not that interesting however sonically interesting it may be it's kind of it's just as valid to listen at home in some cases or it just be playing out of a corner of a room in a PA system I think performing with modular and being able to react and being willing well, I think willing to take the risk is the big thing I think a lot of people aren't willing to go this is a somewhat chaotic system that can not go wrong in a sense, but can maybe do what I don't want it to do. Yeah, I mean, there can be bits where like, oh, this isn't feeling right, this isn't feeling right. I think banana, I, I personally think bananas, are, and they've always been important to me, but they like, they work for this because you don't have to sort of backtrack. Maybe it's different now. When I started Modular, the whole sort of, um, it was you had to patch in multiples. You didn't yeah. have tip top stack, yeah, yeah. stack cables didn't exist back then. And I, and like I think bananas uh, engineering wise. Well, you're not going theory. through. It's the thing that when you you're going through the ground path with a with a mini jack, and it you get that click sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You, you don't get it the same way with bananas, and just the way they feel in the sockets. 
every banana system I've touched, it's it's kind of it's sturdy but not stiff. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Like they they feel like they'll move a little bit, but it, it it feels really solid. And stacking cables really high doesn't feel like any sort of issue ever. And even the kind of cables you get where there's another socket in the side, so you build a stack. You build an old stack off yeah. the side. It, but it just feels like it, it. You could do that and it'd be fine. It doesn't yeah. feel as fragile. You know, stacking. Again, nothing against tip top, but four or five cables high doesn't feel like a nice thing. It, it, not in a mini I see, anyway. see that I've not really tried that. I kind of made up my mind ages ago, and that probably shows me to be massively closed minded. But <laughs> I'm like, I mean, early on, I was like, am I going to do, am I going to work in this way or am I going to work in that way? And I chose not to do Euro Rack, possibly painting myself into a corner, and I chose to do bananas. And because of that, sort of, those sort of these are what I sort of believe in. It then meant that I had to kind of make kind of everything for the system. Yeah, really. yeah. Um, You're not in a system where you can, and it's nice in your Iraq when you see other other companies suggest other companies work. You yeah, someone will go. I really wish you had a an envelope to go with your filter. And it's like, oh well, this company. Well, like, well this yeah. Company, why do I have to build another yeah. one of these? Because actually, that company does it really well, and they're good people. Yeah, we like yeah. those. They yeah. make good things. You don't have that luxury. <laughs> it's kind of like. You, yeah. you can patch in envelopes from elsewhere, of course, the interfaces with other formats, but like I said, you have, you have to build all the building blocks. Yeah. I think the, the sort of the unified system is, I mean, it, it, for me, it works. Um, I think you're like, buying an experience. I think that's the thing. At, at, at the minute, I'm just getting into Surge and, and Banana a little bit more, and you, you're buying into a, an experience way more than... Yara Rack, I think. I think you get it when you get all one company's things from Yara Rack. You get, from modulation to sound source to control, you see someone's ideas and you, you buy into that way of working and mentality a little bit. I mean, it's, it's also an important thing is limitations as well, because, I mean, it's so easy to sort of see new stuff, new stuff, in so many aspects of the world today. Yeah. And... It's it's yeah. I mean, there's there's so many examples of it being distracting and just like yeah, my attention. But like, oh, I think I was working on this, but oh, I've got distracted by this other thing over there. Um, and so to have a sort of, I mean, as I, as I was saying with the sort of studio approaches, I've tried to limit it, and actually, I've been a lot better. I haven't yet got rid of all the sort of crap that I <laughs> that I bought over the last ten years. But it's unplugged and it's out of the way. Exactly, and that sooner or later I will sort of sort through it. But it's like actually I don't need loads of compressors and stuff like that. It's just like keep keep it simple in many sort of things, um, and work with what you've got. That's yeah. I mean that sort of stuff. It was an early reaction that I had with computer audio. It's like so easy to get. Oh, like I can get a thousand plugins, and then it's like well, all presets and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just like. Really find something and then work with that and learn that instrument. Otherwise, the the ground is constantly shifting under you, and you'll you, you won't learn this instrument. So that's my sort of yeah. feeling on like yeah, of course. Uh, one thing I did want to ask is there's a couple of uh, I've the discontinued. I'm not sure, is that the right word? You know, just maybe not not in the current range. Things like the spring reverb and this idea of building that like the Bug Brand Studio, the, the sound sources. I mean, I'm not saying you want to build a 32 channel mixer or anything, but then that's kind of studio tool, the synth stuff. Is this something you want to bring more back of, other effects, other kind of sound sources even? Where do you kind of see this idea of the, the bug brand instrument, as it were, going? It's, it's a really big question, and I'm sure there's lots of tangents off. I mean, things like the spring tank, uh, spring tanker, that wasn't meant yeah. to be a long <laughs> Um <laughs> The physical properties and the constraints of the actual tanks. I mean, it had a, there. There were a few sort of teething issues with those, and I'm not sure actually having pushed and pushed to make it happen. I'm not sure that the sort of design approach. People like I've had good feedback. Yeah. But like having the exposed spring, um, I don't know. Personally, I've never used that, and actually, the feedback was sort of like, well, it ran away too quickly. So, it's always a sort of you have to build something and then. It's got to live with it for a while. Live, exactly. 
Um, so I'm not going to say I'll never do that again. Um, other things that I'd, I noticed, the fears up there that I'd Nobody's I'd not really seen, seen that, before. no. Yeah. Um, I've been wanting to play around with that sort of thing, partly like the curiosity of the circuitry. Um, and I've again, I've been through, I've been playing with that sort of stuff for a couple of years, slowly, slowly, but each time I do something, it hasn't always sort of felt quite right, but each step I sort of find out new sort of things so I'm yeah. in no rush to sort of be like I mean there's two dual phases there as well and again I'm sort of thinking a bit differently on it might come as one one frack sort of things I don't know um, something like the stereo compress in theory at the end of last year I was like no I'm drawing a line under that it's been a slow seller but I'm personally I use it I use the ones I've got all the time and I'm super happy to have yeah, done it. Yeah, everyone I know that has one, it's like, that is on my stereo chain. Yeah. And it lives there. However subtle or extreme the compression is, it's, it's one of those, like, that stays on the chain. Yeah. Um, and I was like, it's been such a slow seller, can I do it? I think I'll give it a rest for now. But actually, it partly it turned out that I found a stash of, of quite a few panels that I'd ordered and somehow, like, yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, well, I might as well use those up. So even if it's sort of, I mean, the design work is done, really. Yeah. So I might as well do it gradually, try and do another 50 of them or something like that. Um, every so often I'm like, I should do a, a, a mono version of it, or maybe I could do a, a more compact version of it. I mean, it's, yeah, ideas are easy. Actually making them happen is like, Yeah, yeah. Well, there's, there's enough... St- in your catalogue to have a whole stereo kind of back end as it were you couple the PEQ well the PEQ again the like, yeah. it's a really nice pairing but again I've been trying to read I'm, I'm basically again and again I sort of trip myself up because I'm like people are like oh that's really good and I'm like oh I'm not quite I'm not quite sure about it <laughs> so the PEQ I've tried to do a, another version but then I'm sort of like it, it would be really good if it was linkable to stereo, but then do I want it to be a sort of ganged stereo or do I want it to be independent? Because, like, yeah. if, you, if you're trying to apply it to a stereo field, do you want it? Frankly, it would be nice to just have one control. That, yeah, that or do you want to control play. the Im- You want yeah. to make the image. I mean, for example, and then I start the thinking, like, well, the low pass and the sort of low pass and high pass bookends, those might be good stereo, but then. Like mid frequencies, it might be quite nice to have, yeah, to have the ability to like do left and right different. And it's just like there's so many parameters, and yeah, so that has. I don't of... know. I think the old just get two would have been my approach. The PEQ had two of them and the compressor, and then okay, it's not as it's not as convenient to just go. I want this to be brighter, and have to grab two knobs instead of one and try and match them. But yeah. I don't know, and that, yeah. and then actually the, 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 with with the two PEQs that fits to make a full frame because I'm also sort of like well how yeah, is it I'm actually going to yeah yeah um, so yeah the sort of slowly bubbling through ideas is like uh, last night I was looking at sample and holds having sort of seen something um, well one of my customers in Sweden had suggested like uh, shift registers analog shift registers and it all kinds of I mean it's just constantly swirling and like things will be forgotten and then it'll pop up again and then I'll look at things and it's all a lot of it is like how do I how can I sort of fit this on a panel okay there's still a bit of space no that's not going to feel right and it's just yeah there's no sort of it's all slow and it's like yeah I mean you can see I've built up quite a few different sort of things that Will probably sit there for six months and then it'll yeah. be like, ah, okay, let's revisit that. And uh, yeah, I did have some people ask, and, and I've given this answer out, but it's just a, you know, it's a nice one to put in the video for people that I don't speak to. For anyone wanting this stuff, I mean, what's the best way for them to get hold of you? I think we met just because I signed up to the newsletter, you email, you put me on the list, and I replied with whatever, and you replied, and then that's how we ended up talking to each other. Yeah. Um, 
is that still the way that you would see doing business and just for people to sign up to the newsletter and appear, follow along with the story? Basically, and, email me. I mean, the, 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 like, yeah, how one sort of shares information. I have the forum on Muff Wiggler. Um, that's again, it's fairly sporadic. The mail out a sort of once a month and. I mean, it's kind of spur of the moment. Like, I, b- before I moved back to Bristol a year ago, it was sort of, um, I was doing generally a batch a month, but now that I've got jazz working for me, um, and and some of the designs are sort of uh, able to be sort of semi-regularly produced, so are in stock more. Um, it's, yeah... Some things like the PT delay has been in stock for a while. Yeah. The modules, I've actually had some sort of stock on the shelf but haven't made them up into synth voices yeah. yet. Um, it, yeah, I still reply to all emails that yeah. come in and that's the best. That's sort of the best way if people are like, oh, what can I do about this? Um, well, I think it leads to having a conversation as well rather than just buying it from the shop. Yeah, I think my thing with bug brand is some friends have had it and I've tried it and enjoyed it, but me, my interest in it has been that I've actually spoken to you, and we've, there's been some conversation around some of these products and having played it, I don't know if it's a more informed position or just I've already got ideas in my head or I understand some of the intention of the product and then maybe approach it differently or, but it's a nice way. If not every business can do this, but it's a nice way to work. Yeah, I mean, I, can. I feel super, super lucky continue to be to be able to do this and to be able to get by doing this. It works sort of life-wise. I mean, I pour a lot of time into doing it and I have done for ages, but it's much more balanced now. Like I have time with my son um, and that gives a sort of structure to things. But, it, but yeah, to be able to... Uh, my customers continue to be just like really good, wonderful, inspiring sort of people. And it's really lovely to have that. Um, and I can get by doing this sort of stuff and uh, and employing one person a few days a week. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's nice just yeah. to be able to be and and to be sort of relatively open about like, do I want to expand? Not really. I want to just keep on. I'm interested in this. I, there's still lots of things I'd like to explore. I can't do them all. I can't keep everything sort of in stock. But um, yeah, I can just I've got I've got ideas for a good good while still to come. Yeah. And, well, I've, and as I say, there's, I've, there's things that I don't I've got. Don't I've got the sort that. of infrastructure now that I can just carry on and like I can build f- full prototypes and try them out myself and get the feel that sort of way. Um, so yeah, feeling yeah yeah good place to be. Grateful to to be able to yeah to be able to carry on doing it. So yeah.